climate change makes not only me, like the whole village, worried about what will happen next. So we always prepared for everything. The whole economy around the rural areas depends on the environment. They get their food from the environment, they get their livelihoods, what they take to the market uh, to get money to support and buy other things. This all depends on the environment. And when the environment changes due to climate change, all this is affected. The patterns is changing. The tracks of tropical cyclones are also changing and it's becoming much more unpredictable. So it is posing us a huge challenge in terms of providing those information. In Fiji, we are encouraging uh, the use of renewable energy like solar and also building of sea walls, uh, relocations of uh, people living uh, on the vulnerable uh, coastline. The solar system can be owned by the sun. If the cyclone comes or anything comes, we can't get the electricity in this community. And the flow water can go to the community, never mind if the electricity gone off, to provide this water to them. The first relocation exercise that took place in Fiji took place in a village in the northern division, that is Bunindongaloa village. village. The communities assist people, whatever we can do to assist community in trying to look at climate change and what is there to adapt to climate change. Climate change is here. Not one of the 7.5 billion people on Earth can escape the impact of climate change. COP23 is the coming together of uh, our world leaders uh, to discuss uh, our climate change and uh, its impact to the world. COP23 is uh, very important as far as the Pacific Island uh, countries are concerned because uh, we have the Prime Minister of Fiji as the president of the COP. To have our Prime Minister uh, lead COP23 is an honor. I feel that he is not only representing Fiji, but he's there to represent the rest of our Pacific Island brothers and sisters and to be, so to speak, the voice of the Pacific. There's a sense of urgency in the Pacific because every day the people of the Pacific suffer the impacts of climate change. We know what it's like to have eroding coastlines and people who are forced to move to higher ground because of the impact of climate change on the coastlines. We had to move people away from their home turf 
so to speak. Uh, places where they've been for hundreds of years. Climate refugees can in fact be very much a reality. Climate refugees from countries like Tuvalu and Kiribati uh, that are very low-lying areas uh, in the Pacific and the way that uh, the sea levels are right, rising, it could actually mean that parts of these uh, islands could actually be submerged. And people will no longer actually have a dry place to live on. This house, this house, all new from the government. So within one year we repaired our house, the lodge, the church, the school, that's within one year. Not only just small islands, but all the affected, the most vulnerable states, be it coastal zones, low-lying coastal zones, be it inland, landlocked countries. We need to act now. It's about the urgency of the situation. The small countries are the lowest emitters, but the ones who are suffering the most that we need to stop the suffering. We need to reduce carbon emission to below the two degrees that was agreed to in Paris. We don't need people to feel sorry for us. We really need action. What came out of Paris is, a, is some good bu building blocks, a good foundation for action. Bah, le message, c'est celui de l'action et de la solidarité, euh, de l'engagement. Euh, je pense que nous avons fait des avancées importantes. Euh, la COP21 a été l'occasion pour la communauté internationale de sceller un grand accord qui est fort, euh, qui, est, qui est engageant. Euh, la COP22 a été une COP qui a initié un, la dynamique. C'est une nouvelle génération de COP orientée vers l'action, qui s'est ouverte sur les acteurs non étatiques et qui, euh, qui a montré beaucoup de volontarisme et qui a appelé aussi à plus de solidarité. We are all bound by a common interest in reducing concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. This is humanity's mission. We're convinced it's uh, the best opportunity we have to step up our game and accelerate action, and accelerate action on many fronts. Le temps est à l'action. Il faut passer à l'action. Action, action, action. Well, we need to realize that whatever we do, uh, in terms of government, civil society, businesses, from now into the future has to be taking into account the effects of climate change. What I want to tell the leaders of the world, especially the developed countries, is that the science is very clear. The science is very clear. We need to take urgent action to address climate change. For us in the region, the impacts are very clear. Our local communities are suffering from climate change. I want to see more action taken by our leaders, and I want to see the Pacific Island countries taking on the leadership role, just like any other corps. Because only by coming together as one world, one united global community, can mankind overcome the greatest challenge we have ever faced in the broad sweep of human history. It's how we share our opinions, our challenges, our knowledge and our lives. It's also how we inspire positive change. Every culture has its own tradition of storytelling. In Fiji, Tonga and Samoa, storytelling is known as Talanoa. And it is a powerful tool in motivating people to build consensus and take action. 
Talanoa allows us to have difficult discussions in an open, inclusive, and solutions-oriented way. This is why we are asking everyone to participate in the Talanoa Dialogue, to openly and respectfully share stories about climate change from their perspective and how it is affecting their lives, their communities, and the world. But these discussions must be more than just talk. Through Talanoa, we must reach mutual understanding and empathy and make wise decisions for the collective good. Through Talanoa, we must inform, motivate, and drive more ambitious action that helps achieve the goals of the Paris Agreement. Action that will create greater awareness, change minds, and inspire solutions that can help us limit warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. Because at the moment, with the current level of global commitment, we are heading for a catastrophic three degrees of warming. And so we need all levels of government, civil society, the private sector, and the scientific community to take part. There will be no finger pointing or laying blame. That is not what Talanoa is about. As Frank Banimarama, the Honorable Prime Minister of Fiji and President of COP23 often says, when it comes to climate change, we are all in the same canoe. So it is now that we ask you, in whatever capacity you are participating in the Talanoa Dialogue, to be prepared to tell stories and provide solutions that address each of the three central questions. Where are we now? Where do we want to go? How do we get there? Contributions should be clear, concise, and constructive, and focus on specific examples of progress from which others can learn. Consider how your contribution supports the 1.5 degree goal and how it can help countries implement and enhance their climate commitments. Ask, how do I want to shape the dialogue that political leaders will be having at COP24? What do I want world leaders to agree to and to pledge in Poland? In telling your story, consider addressing the three questions from your own perspective. You shape the dialogue and its outcomes by sharing where you would like to be and what enabling factors you require in order to get there. Let's Talanoa for ambition together. Let's positively and constructively decide how to paddle our canoe further, faster, together. Climate change affects women in the Pacific as much as anybody else, are more so because of the burden that women carry in terms of women having to go out further and further away to fetch water, to get firewood and so on. Men losing their jobs, taking out their frustrations on women. The first to migrate in any community with such a, in such a situation are the men who are left behind, the older people, the women and the children. So that means they have really an extreme degree of vulnerability to, what, to the different kinds of effects of climate change. If you look at the burden of work that Pacific women have, it impacts on them a lot more than it would on other people. It's really sad because on top of everything else, now we have climate change adding more burden to people who are already vulnerable. We need to focus on addressing the impacts and we need to act now. It's about the urgency of the situation. So any work that is done around uh, climate change and so on, uh, that women are part and parcel of that and taking leadership on it and that leadership to be respected. Climate change is affecting Fiji in many ways. 
we've got about 60 years of data that we have analyzed and seen that the air temperatures are rising much faster than the global average. When we look at the variability in rainfall, uh, there is a high variability from one year to the other. The sea levels are rising, there are a number of communities, coastal communities, they are being affected and they are also being relocated to the higher grounds. Looking at the long term, projection for rainfall in Kiribati will be increased. The sea has been warmed and that's contributed to a, a lot of impact in terms of the marine ecosystem. I the Department of Meteorology uh, is adapting to the climate changes that we are facing, especially in terms of predicting the weather events so that they are able to provide uh, specific, accurate and timely information for our all communities. We are monitoring very closely the, the changing weather patterns within the geographical regions in Fiji. Fiji is scattered uh, within the South Pacific Ocean and we need uh, to react quickly uh, when disasters do strike. We are looking at the best uh, agricultural practices and even technology to assist us so that we can continue uh, to produce for the domestic market and likewise for our export markets as well because agriculture is so important for the Fijian economy. Weather monitoring in, 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 in Kiribati is, is quite limited. Our office haven't got uh, the full equipment and capacity to maintain our work, especially in weather monitoring. Out of the many islands, we only have uh, five operational stations. We are looking at more support and funding support in terms of improving the weather observation. We are looking forward to the partners and donors to provide technologies that is more relevant for the Pacific Island countries, including Fiji. Fiji is not the only uh, country affected. Uh, it is a, a global concern and Fiji uh, is doing all it can in terms of its uh, NDCs and of course adaptation and mitigation plans so that we can contribute.